Well, Peter, this was, of course, a total vindication of Mike Duffy, but it was more than that. It was also an extraordinary judicial indictment of Stephen Harper's PMO. Duffy said nothing as he emerged from his long nightmare. Every single one of the 31 charges was thrown out. And I don't think I've ever been witness to such a resounding acquittal. Duffy's lawyer turned his scorn on Duffy's colleagues in the Senate who had turned on him. Those who rushed to judgment acted like a political herd in the Senate, to the great discredit of the Senate, uh, should give real second thought to how they behaved in this. The author of today's ruling was Judge Charles Valancourt, who began by dismissing the charges about Duffy's housing claims. Duffy claimed his cottage on Friendly Lane in PEI as his primary residence, and the judge said no problem, because there was, in fact, no definition in place of primary residence. As for Duffy's travel claims, again, the judge said no rule prevented partisan or even personal business if there was some public business. So... No violation of administrative rules, much less the criminal law. Even Duffy's use of contracts to funnel public money to a personal trainer was ruled okay. The judge said it was unorthodox, but not intended to bilk Senate finance. There was no oversight to avoid. Well, in terms of the Senate, we knew this, that senators were unaccountable. Now we know they're really unaccountable because you can claim almost anything as a Senate expense and have the public pay for it. So that's one... Uh, unfortunate part of the ruling. But the most remarkable part of the ruling was that Judge Valancourt raked Stephen Harper's PMO over the coals for using Tory senators to force a deceptive scenario on Duffy to take the famous $90,000 from Nigel Wright and to admit that his housing claims were wrong. The judge seemed stunned, asking, was Nigel Wright actually ordering senior members of the Senate around as if they were mere pawns on a chessboard? Were those same senior members of the Senate meekly acquiescing to Mr. Wright's orders? Yes and yes, the judge said, calling the PMO's conduct covert, mind-boggling and shocking. The alleged bribery, he said, was an officially induced error. Duffy was kicking and screaming every step of the way. He concluded Duffy did not receive a true advantage or benefit. The true recipients of any benefit, the disappearance of a political embarrassment, are Nigel Wright, the PMO, the Prime Minister and the Conservative Party of Canada. Senator Duffy capitulated in the face of threats, pressure and inducements. The Tories then leader in the Senate rapidly disowned the whole business. I was not part of the uh, process in the Prime Minister's office and a lot of the things that were said were unknown to me and after the fact. The judge though said that the senators danced to the PMO's tune and he noted that the Crown called Senator Duffy's actions deceitful and clandestine but he said if you put PMO in that sentence instead of Duffy it would be a more accurate statement.